Hello everyone, my name's Laura. Welcome to webinar 34. Ooh, it's so dark. Winter wellness plan for remote working. So without further ado, let me par um, uh, share my screen. And oh, look at that. We have our polar bears there um, who are reveling and delighting in the cold. So how are we going to make sure that we then um, make the best out of the changing in seasons? So with series six, we've taken more of an edutainment approach. So using some light ways to deliver what might be some quite heavy, hefty topics. And they're all designed to encourage, empower and embolden us as we flex and stretch how we work in 2020. As everything starts to speed up, Oh, there's that feeling of how do we keep up and keep ahead of the game? So as we're experiencing the biggest shift in how we work in our lifetimes, these episodes are situation based as opposed to vertical skill based and inspired. We thought it'd be fun by the format of an agony aunt advice column because everyone needs a Debbie in their life. So starting in our foxy post bag with a dear Debbie letter each week, we explore real life situations that can get in the way of our confidence and our ability to succeed. This marks our final Final webinar as we shift into winter podcast mode and the idea behind that is for professional development on the move with a webinar you have to kind of sit at the table and consume we want you to be able to consume learning as you lay the table so it's kind of like bubblegum L and D for your ears that's our kind of intention so what's the letter dear Debbie this week dear Debbie like everyone this year has been full of ups and downs but on the whole I think the team and I've handled it okay the office is officially closed until at least January 2021, so remote working is here to stay. The thing is, a key part of our ability to thrive during spring summer was the decent weather and the long sunlight hours. I'm worried that with the weather turning and the nights getting longer, we're going to find it harder than the first time. What would your advice be to help look after ourselves at work and remote during these winter months? Yours, a friend in need. Okay, so friend in need. You're going to get a direct reply to your letter. Um, so not only will we send that out in our in a nutshell document, but Debs and I will be in conversation later on our podcast where we'll really address that specific. Um, delighted to be joined by special wellness guest Lindsay Thompson Wright, who also will be giving you some tips. Um, and that's on this webinar later. So, as always, I like to do a book recommendation. So I started to look online for what might be some inspiration, positive tips for making the best out of these cold winter months. And for me, icy graves, exploration and death in the Antarctic left me a little bit cold. So actually, there are some things that we can pick up in terms of what to avoid. But what we like to do in Series 6 is have a think about, well, what can we do to be able to smash it out of the park and keep feeling professionally top of our game as maybe we have a change in circumstances and there is something uniquely different even if you are going to work in the arctic in terms of how you would train up get equipped be prepared for whether your work was going to be conducted during the summer or the winter obviously that's an extreme example but it sure does get you thinking that actually there might be a need for a change in technique so this 30 minute lunch and learn is a chance to think about how we can level up winter wellness plan for remote working um, with millions of us now gearing up to work remotely from home from the first winter, the seasonal shift in weather and daytime hours might impact us a little bit differently than before. So as anyone who works in transport knows, winterproofing, winterisation is vital for operational resilience and performance. So what does that mean in terms of our work? As many of us settle into this, let's spend some time on this session considering the impacts the external environment has on humans. What might that mean? Just some food for thought for gearing up for remote working during the winter months. And then we'll um, pass on to Lindsay, who is going to take us through some winter watch outs and wellness tips. So I'll bring her in as and when we get to that bit. OK, so what is some of the impact of external environment on humans? And I'm always fascinated by kind of standout examples um, that just interest me in terms of human behaviour. This picked up um, about 20 odd years ago about apparently there is a specific temperature that needs to be achieved to then prompt the urge to trigger riots. So riots more likely happen in summer than they do in winter. There's something about the impact that temperature has on us, on humans, that can really influence our behaviour. So I did a bit of digging around and actually the BBC website show there is a link between temperature rising and dropping 
and the prevalence of violent crime. And it's not just in the UK. Studies all around the world show that there is a link between weather and temperature and those rising crime rates. So I'm not saying that conducting a criminal act is going to be your um, working uh, goal over this next season, but it just gives you an insight into it is not irrelevant, the external temperature we have around us. So what might that mean for us? So let's be clear, there is a difference between winter and summer. No matter how sophisticated our lives are, no matter how set up we are, we are at the beck and call of the weather around us at some key points. So let's say that we've said in our team, see you all again next month, we'll have a check in. Brilliant. So a few months ago, this is Snake Pass, the A57 up near the Peak District. We then would have meandered off on our journeys and maybe had a few catch up picnics, even though we might have been in, in sort of lockdown, etc. And the journey, actually, you know, we had some news to share. And so month by month, we could check in. Suddenly, that same piece of terrain now looks like this. And see you all again next month. Suddenly, that time frame seems a little bit longer than when we had sunshine. So what might that mean? Well, if our place of work was a vehicle, it would be a duty of care for an employer, for a manager to ensure that we have the right conditions to influence the way that we act and behave on the road. So what does that mean in terms of us and maybe shifting from our summer tyres to our winter tyres to ensure that we tread safely and well over the next three to four months? So winter expedition training. Um, this was a fantastic blog that I found, Heather Hansman. So um, uh, last year, little would she have known how much this had been drawn upon, hey, now in 2020. And it was fascinating reading about some of this research into humans in, in kind of cold, um, long polar winters. And uh, this made me chuckle, this people started behaving badly. <laughs> so in harsh environments. And there's something about the biological reaction to lack of sunlight, isolation and darkness and for anyone that has seen the horror film the shining um then suddenly that space that was all lovely to sit and write your kind of book you've got little jack torrance there who's going slowly mad working at remotely suddenly that place that was a place of uh, you know a nice place to work in might suddenly feel a little bit more locked in in terms of the external environment and what might be some quick advice that we might take from expedition members there's often an urge to hold the emotions in, they found, because we don't want to burden those around us. So actually diaries can be quite a good way. And I know Linz will pick this up a little bit later. This also made me chuckle. In extreme environments, we often think about all the normal things that our friends and family are able to get on with. So the point at which I find myself jealous listening to the children outside playing in the snow sort of means to me that maybe I need to sort my well-being out. And this is uh, uh, through uh, reading through old trip logs. This fascinated me. So I don't know exactly how we might apply this, but those bases that had the poorest communication with the outside world had better mental health records. And one of the reasons why they think that is, is because when you feel like you're part of a team and you've got to work together to stay well, keep busy and focus on an engrossing task without outside distraction, actually that's quite good for our brain to be able to focus that. So, what might that mean in terms of us in our world gearing up for working during the winter months? We might not be going out into the Arctic, but many of us are potentially looking at a long term working from home and now we're about to have a shift in season. So I might have totally smashed it in terms of my spring summer remote working wardrobe. Suddenly I might need to pack a little bit differently. So what might be some food for thought before we hand over to Lynn? So some tactical, practical tips. Step one. Let's use this journey, this, this uh, idea of driving as a metaphor. I am the driver. So what winter, wor winter working structures are gonna work best for me? This time last year, my commute, it might have felt a bit eat, sleep, work, repeat, but I had to walk somewhere to get into some kind of vehicle, potentially. I then had to nip out at lunch to get something, and then I had to kind of slog it back again on that commute. Even if it had been unwanted, there would have been, I would have been forced to get fresh air, sunlight and a change of scenery. So as the driver now, how am I going to replace that? Because I might not have enjoyed it at the time, but it probably was quite good for me. So I'm going to get set up nicely in my kind of remote office. Brilliant. But my head is thumping. I'm absolutely exhausted. I've got headaches because actually I'm feeling chained to the desk. And the only times I'm getting up is to go and put the kettle on and go to the loo. So... What is going to help me keep bright and light as the days get darker and colder? I am the driver. 
Could it be that I use the weather to plan which days in the week in advance are best to schedule in more gaps? If I'm lucky enough to be able to have some kind of influence over the time frames, maybe I might scan at the weekend what the week ahead looks like, and I might glance at that and go, right, might be good for me to keep Wednesday during the day kind of clear if possible, because that looks like it might be a good day to go out and get outside. And let's have also have a rethink about this kind of nine till five, because that might be a construct that you might not need to stick to if it doesn't thrive so much. Nine to five kind of maybe that was a way to deal with transport as opposed to the productivity that we've got. Could it be more useful to use Zulu time? So Zulu time is the kind of world um, universal coordinated time that's used by military, aviation and navigation. So as the sunlight hours adjust, does it have to be your work until a certain time? Maybe you could run your day on Zulu time and then it means any time's OK for a pina colada. So step two, what might that mean in terms of planning my journey? So how can I set myself to flourish? And I refound this again and it got me thinking about um, what does that mean in terms of setting us up to be able to flourish as opposed to languish. So this idea of all play, no work or no work, all play, I think we can probably guess what the sweet spot is. But if we sort of get ourselves into mode for the next season of, right, I'm going to have no work and no play because I'm just feeling rubbish. What that might mean a bomb reflection when we look back is we think, God, we just languished and we just kind of wallowed in that season that we had. Okay, fine. All right, well, I'm going to set in loads of things to look forward to. It's going to feel like it's lots of fun. Brilliant. Now, that'll feel nice and it'll feel sweet at the time, but sometimes that might leave a bit of a sugary aftertaste because we might look back and kind of go, oh, what did I actually do? I can't remember any of it. So, okay, let's mix it in then. So, let's play. Let's do lots of work. Right. Well, we might be productive, but we might look back and think, God, that was a slog that winter. So, of course, the sweet spot is how can I have a bit of both? How can I plan in the work that keeps me feeling on purpose and the play so it feels fun along the way? So we're able to look back and think, well, I might not have stepped out of the house for however many um, days, but actually I feel like I had a good time. And I'm sure later on with Deb, she'll introduce us to some ideas about hygge, which is how do I create an atmosphere of warmth and well-being and cosiness? So step two, thinking in advance what might be some things to plan in. And step three, just like if we were taking a car journey out in adverse conditions, what might be some things I want to set up in advance? And the parallel we're going to bring in this is how might I need to adjust some conversations just so we set ourselves and each other up well? Because phrases like, I'll call you during the day to catch up. Unbeknownst to the other person, it was sent with love, but now you've just caged in my day. Because now I feel like I can't even go um, into the bathroom without thinking, oh, God, they might call now. So even though I'm working remotely, I may feel more fixed than ever because at any point someone might phone and it actually potentially cages my time around the day. If we were to adjust language in a little bit and say, should we speak around one o'clock to catch up? What that gives me is it gives me a bit of sense of freedom around the day. I could go and meet someone in a park, sit on a bench and, um, you know, kind of actually spend some time in the day getting some of that sunlight and that um, movement. So I'm working remotely and I feel freer than ever. So in return, maybe um, for some of those perks that we're missing in terms of being around in return for that, we're then able to exercise some freedom. But I think unbeknownst to us, even more in autumn, winter, it's really easy to accidentally cage each other in with these kind of global statements of, I'll call you at some point. And actually it means we can feel even more kind of chained to the desk. Whereas in a more visible office environment, you'd be able to see if people were out and about or busy, etc. So we're now going to pass over remote controlly uh, for some wellness tips and winter watch outs with the ever gorgeous Lindsay Thompson Wright, who is a cognitive behavioral coach who works with individuals and organizations to help them unlock their brilliance, particularly focus around resilience and mental health. So Linz, what I'm going to do now is, let me just shift the audience around, is I'm now going to hand over remote control to you. And here we go. You should now be in charge. going to unmute you. Okay, are we good? 
we're good good thank you thank you laura so thanks for having me uh, as, as usual laura said lynn's can you come and do a talk about winter <laughs> winter wellness i said like, how long have i got she goes 10 minutes <laughs> okay i'll make it short and sweet <laughs> so um this is building on from what i've heard with coaching people during the original lockdown and what i perceive to be the main themes that have come through from those um so this is what um i would talk about so these are the three what i'd call the winter watchers if you lock down again what to be careful of uh, overworking overthinking and overeating these are the three biggest themes that i've heard coming through from the original one with to keep an eye on for what could be coming so overworking um is definitely something i've we i've seen coming through over and over again so this is the the, the confusion around i can now work um shorter hours so to speak so i haven't got a commute at the end of my journey i'm choosing my own hours so on paper it sounds really yay this could work for me but um i've been seeing it play out where it might not work out as well as we thought and this comes to uh, lots of reasons obviously people are often working at home so the the physical boundary between going to work coming from home is now gone and the buffer in between ha has has left you know when i used to drive to work i'd be driving home reflecting on my day thinking about how it's gone and then i'd come home and i can start the family time and i had that time for the, for the moment to get my head uh, clear whereas at the minute the work seeps into the day you know i finished my last virtual workshop and then my daughter's there saying what time's dinner and i haven't had any time to turn one off and turn the other one on they're all just kind of interconnected so when I talk about overworking I'm not saying people are working too hard I'm saying the boundaries between work and the the, the, the quadrant you were talking about how do we determine those lines really uh, if I'm if I'm working in my bedroom emotionally and psychologically how do I disconnect and the biggest impact I'm seeing this from an overworking perspective is presence so um, the laptop is associated for example with work now because of my zoom calls are on there so when that, when that laptop is even in my vision actually there's a part of me that's still at work when i'm checking my phone even if, I, if my phone's over there if i see the screen light up oh that part of my thinking is over there i'm not completely present in the moment with what i'm doing um so coming back to this um it's about presence it's about boundaries the physical boundaries aren't necessarily there you talked about the nine to five the other issue where we've got around working the nine to five is if i choose to work a different kind of shift i'm now not possibly tied in with somebody else that i might live with so um their working day might start at six and my working day might not start till 10 but if i finish later and they're finished early we've now got together we've got a massive working day so we're stretching the household working day um and i think there's a little bit of overcompensating we're seeing where i don't want anyone i don't want my boss to think that i'm not working uh because i'm at home and i could be watching you know lose swimming at the same time so people are sending emails really early and sending emails later just to kind of overcompensate in case someone thinks they might not be working as hard or being as productive so people are working longer but not necessarily um, as productive it's kind of stretching out rather than pulling it in tighter the other thing that i've seen creeping is what i would call the overthinking so uh, because i'm spending more time on my own all the stuff i'd usually do if i was working with a team or working with sitting next to somebody um if i was sending an email out uh, if i was working with you laura i might say oh laura have a look at that email do you reckon that's okay to send and they oh, don't say that say this i haven't got anybody to bounce anything with i'm very much in my own head around is that okay do you think i should say that could i say it differently and what we've seen started to come to come through is what i call almost like a send anxiety so people are overthinking their tasks because they're being perceived on how they're doing it and the only person they're checking with is themselves so um, I was hearing creeping into conversations well okay I started early because I think you know my boss might think so we're thinking too much around how things are landing I'm only being judged on what I'm doing and not how I am in the office so there's a real overthinking um, creeping in um the other thing that i've definitely seen creeping is what i'd call overeating over drinking you know as soon as you remove structure from the day like you said on your brilliant slides we used to get up 
go to work. That was that part of the day. Then I had the work bit. Then I do that till lunchtime. Then I might go to the for a swim or I go to the gym or I have my lunch. And then I had that. And we have real clear structure in our day where those boundaries that are, that are causing us to work longer, stranger hours. It's also mean we've got a lack of structure and it's a natural tendency to try and put some structure in. And how we tend to do that is by saying, I'll do that and then I'll have something to eat. <laughs> I'll do that and I'll have a cup of tea. And when I finish tonight, I'm definitely gonna have this. So we kind of put food in and stopping for food in order to um, eat something. And what we're craving is structure. It's a real hunger for structure and recognition from other people. I'm doing a great job. I'm doing really, really well. But instead, I try and get that. You've done really well. You can have a glass of wine tonight. I'm recognising myself with food and the things that I like. You know, you know what? I've done really well. So I'm definitely going to buy a whole nut. That's my stuff. And <laughs> um, that's what creeps in. So um, it, there's loads of stuff that's going to creep in. But I'll say overworking, the three overs, overworking, overthinking, overeating are the, are the real watch outs to, to, to look out for. Uh, and I've got some little tips to help us get through um, the uh, the kind of where the winter world is tips for thriving, not just for surviving. Boundaries. I know I bang on about boundaries all the time. If we can structure the day, know the time frames we're doing it with within, uh, that's certainly going to help us with at least two of those. Um, to to stop overthinking, it's really hard to uh, not overthink. It's something we just naturally do. And having that presence with our phone in our hands will make us keep doing it. So when we do something with our hands, knitting, coloring in, uh, gluing, sticking, pacing, anything that we're doing like that, as soon as we get creative and we involve our hands, it naturally makes our overthinking reduce. It just cleans out the process. So doing this, actually stopping and doing something um, with our hands is really useful stay connected you know i've i know we've had it on a call here before have a call with somebody we're definitely over zooming i would say that's another thing around overworking not having a big enough break between the next zoom call you know I, it is such a challenge you know someone said to me the other day my boss rings me and he rings me up on a zoom call and goes how are you doing and i go yeah fine and i think oh i'll be fine if you got off the zoom call and gave me time to go to the toilet you know we are we are chained to that laptop it's just keeping us there so staying connected picking up the phone having a chat with people is absolutely key um when we are feeling low i always say don't try and fight the emotion sometimes we're so kind of something become a bit scared of feeling um sad or feeling anxious they're completely normal emotions what's challenging for us is keep trying to push them to one side that takes a huge amount of headspace for us so being able to throw a five minute pity party or um a worry fest you know put my set your phone five minutes put your balloons up and have a right pity party i'm going to invite nobody else and think about all the things that's upsetting you or worrying you and you let them all in um which is really interesting because what naturally happens after about two three minutes you kind of go oh, i can't think of anything else but that's it job done the alarm goes off we take the balloons down and go right i'm done I've, i haven't got to stop i haven't got to keep fighting that during the day now i've let that all in and i've let it in and i've acknowledged it and i've dealt i'm dealing with it um it's really cleansing actually to do i've got him move your body now in the summer we're like go out for a run go out on the bike you know it's sunny it makes me want to go out on the run and walk the dog you know it's pouring down with rain it's dark at by half past six you're like oh really Go for a run, not happening, not happening. Um, so this is about moving, changing your state. So just creating a different place, even if it is just putting your legs up the wall. If you go on Google, putting your legs up the wall, there's like a list of 20 reasons why it's an amazing thing to do. But just have, I'm gonna take the next call with my legs up the wall. You know, you will feel mentally, emotionally different simply because you've changed your state. You've changed, if I'm sitting in one position, I'm gonna feel a similar way. By moving my body, I will feel different different uh next we've got gratitude you know focus on what we're grateful for keeping a diary like they did in the arts you know today's been a great day because you know i did well today because you know when we, when we focus on gratitude it's harder to feel the uh, negative emotions um check your thinking you know are we are you making yourself feel worse by thinking certain things um it's going to be a nightmare i thought my mum just said to me essex is locked down it's going to be a nightmare yeah is that making me or her feel worse or feel better it's making us feel worse it's going to be okay it's not going to be brilliant but it's going to be okay by saying it's going to be a nightmare um we're talking ourselves into it 
limit the news time so our internal um dialogue we catastrophize things we face things like it's going to be a disaster it's going to be a nightmare christmas is going to be ruined you know we have all that kind of stuff going on when we read a headline that goes christmas is ruined we go see i was right it is ruined now because i've heard a newspaper saying it so they are tuning in to our own catastrophizing so read the paper read the facts quick as you can and then put it away um and don't read again they're not they're not re they're not giving us those headlines to make us feel better okay they're making us feel worse and we are openly opening up the app reading that um, newspaper and buying into it um I think acceptance is really interesting you know we are where we are we're not it's not great um you know we're not where we'd like to be but the only thing i have got complete control over is how how i feel today and how i allow things to impact me so by accepting we are where we are but you know what i can be okay today uh, it's absolutely key. Uh, get learning. So when we start focusing our mind somewhere else and uh, learn a new skill, our pleasure is tied to mastery. So the better we get at something, the more we achieve, the pleasure is uh, greater and it will keep us away from instant gratification, which is the quick fix, which is eating, drinking, smoking, all that stuff. So um, real pleasure gets tied to achievement and mastery. Um, and the last one is keep your eyes on today. So many um, people's mood are getting impacted by the uh, what if thing but what if what if we got locked down again what if i can't have people around for christmas what if um work so i've got work home for the rest of my day you know let's cross that bridge when that comes i'll cross the christmas bridge when that comes i don't just cross it today but if i start thinking about it today I will feel exactly the same as it was the week before christmas and i don't know what i'm doing so i would say as soon as you go what if but supposing Keep your eyes on today. We are where we are. I accept where we are. And I'll, should that happen, I'll cross that bridge then. Okay. Does that? I hope that all makes sense, Laura. It's a very kind of whistle stop tour. Um, but I say choose one or choose two, and you know, go with it. Play around with it and see how you get on. Oh, Linz, you are just so awesome. You're like a little positive husky on an Arctic <laughs> expedition. You are. You want to be a dog? <laughs> Uh, of course not. So I'm now going to take the remote control back. How exciting. Every day is school day, isn't it? Right. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Lynn. That was just brilliant. As always, just really practical stuff. Immediately, um, uh, um, you can put it into practice. And um, it's fascinating, isn't it? This whole world and just the impact our brain has on, our, on, on how we view things. It's, it's just phenomenal. Um, so thank you so much, Linz. So let's wrap up now. So we had our letter in our Foxy post box from a friend in need about any tips or advice for um, setting up well for winter wellness. Because if we were going out on a journey in midwinter compared to midsummer, you would pack differently. Not only what you take with you, but what you wear. And so you can tread, whether that's wheels or our uh, mindset, well in the terrain that's ahead of us. Oh, so have a think about how you're gonna work um, together um, as a team, as an individual, as a domestic team. Have a think about how you're going to play together as an individual, as a team, whether that's domestic, professional. Um, and so as millions of us settle into a first summer of remote working, we now have the advantage of a bit of time to plan and set ourselves and our teams well. The challenge of the seasonal shift is that our natural inclination to get out and about may reduce. Even if your old commute was mainly in the dark this time last year, we are potentially going to get less light and air if we are now home-based and more sedentary. So we've had some fantastic tips from Lynn's in terms of how to then, just from a sedentary point of view, be able to adjust that. So it's our opportunity to take responsibility for ourselves, plan well, we can start to prepare a warm, safe and high performing environment. It's time to evolve and level up our game. So I hope you found this webinar are useful this is number 34 the first one started 19th of march which i think we're all probably wearing the same clothes that we were now actually the sort of the wardrobes come full circle and it's been the most amazing journey you know for us all and when i say amazing i mean you know the highs and the lows it has been quite an amazing journey for the goods and for the bads and so it's with great pleasure that Debs and I will be shifting into a winter podcast mode so come and join our podcast we're learning how to be able to share that out but you can find us via Buzzsprout and it's secrets from a coach Debs and Law in conversation so wish you well stay safe 
and enjoy what is to come. Keep foxy. Thanks again to Linz.